Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a simple linear regression using SPSS. And uh, regression is where you use the value of one variable to describe or predict the value of a second variable. All right, if you have more than one variable being used to predict the, uh, the second variable, then it would be multiple regression. Okay, so the variable being described is known as the dependent variable, and that's on the y-axis. And the variable being used to describe it is called the independent variable, and that's on the x-axis. All right, we can directly measure the proportion of the variance in the y variable that can be explained by the x variable. All right, and this is a statistic known as r squared, or the coefficient of determination. The closer this value is to 1, then the better the x variable can be used to predict the value of y. So this procedure is called linear regression since it results in the equation for a line. It gives you the slope and the y-intercept. And what it does in linear regression is it minimizes the distance between all the plotted xy pairs simultaneously. So you may be asking, well, what does that mean? All right, so suppose we had a, uh, an x variable and a y variable, and the relationship looked like this. It was a perfectly straight line. In other words, if I knew the value of x, I could tell you the value of y. And you can see that's a straight line. All right, this kind of relationship really doesn't exist in real life. All right, so here's something that might be more like what exists in real life, where we definitely have a relationship as x increases, uh, y has a tendency to increase, right? but it's not a perfectly straight line. So the model that we would build would try to fit a line in here, somewhere around here, that would minimize the distance between all these plotted points, and that's what we're doing with linear regression. All right, so we're, we're ready to go ahead and look at some data in SPSS now. Okay, so here I have some data in SPSS, and it's fictional data, but I have the square foot measurements of houses, all right, and we're going to be trying to use that to predict the selling price, all right, and regression relies on a number of assumptions. One of the assumptions it relies on is that the data that's being used is a continuous variable, all right, so we can agree that square feet is continuous and that price is more or less continuous. So we can go ahead and use regression here, at least uh, from that standpoint, all right? Uh, we'll, we'll test some of the other assumptions as we go along. Uh, the next assumption we need to test, though, is uh, to see if the variables are linearly related, all right? So if they're not linear related, then we probably can't use linear regression. All right, so to test this, I'm going to go to the Analyze menu, all right, and I'm going to look for Compare Means, all right, and under Compare Means, I'm going to select Means, okay, and then I'm just going to go directly to the Options, and I'm going to select Test for Linearity. I'll click Continue, all right, and then I will set the price as the dependent variable and the square footage as the independent variable and click OK. Okay, so SPSS runs the test for us. Uh, the thing we're interested in is down near the bottom. Okay, and what, we, what we're really interested in here is this deviation from linearity, all right, and uh, the significance of that, all right. So if this deviation from line linearity is less than 0 0.05, all right, then we would have to conclude that there is no relationship, no linear relationship. All right, since it is higher than 0 0.05, we can conclude there's a linear relationship, and now we can proceed uh, to the actual regression model building. Okay, so back to our data, and I'm going to go to the Analyze menu again. I'm going to select Regression, and then I'm going to select Linear. So once again, we're going to select price as the dependent variable and square footage as the independent variable. All right. And then we're going to run some of the other tests of linear regression assumptions here. All right. So we're going to go into statistics and we're going to uh, check off confidence interval. So we'll get a confidence interval of the slope. And then I'm going to 
uh, check off Durbin Watson, and I'm going to check off uh, case-wise diagnostics. All right, so two of the assumptions are that there is no autoregression. All right, so Durbin Watson will test for that and uh, that there aren't any outliers. So outliers can have a negative impact on the slope. So we want to make sure that our data doesn't have any, any outliers. All right, after I check those two, I am going to click continue and then I'm going to go on to plots. So one of the other assumptions that we're going to test is this idea of homoscedasticity, all right? And that is that the variance of the residuals, all right, from our model that we built are fairly constant, all right? So if they have some other relationship where they tend to get bigger as the, uh, uh, as the independent variable gets bigger, uh, then we may have a problem with uh, heteroscedasticity and uh, we may have to, uh, again, not, not run a regression test on that. So I'm going to plot the residuals as the x variable against the predicted values on the y, okay? And then I'm also going to check this histogram plot so that we can see if the errors are roughly uh, normally distributed. All right, so both these things are tests that you need to uh, that you need to conduct to see if the model that you build is a, a valid one. So I'll click continue and then I'll click OK. All right, once we click OK, we're going to actually run the regression. Okay, and so then it's just uh, up to us to interpret the output. All right, so I'll just start at the at the top here. All right, with the model summary. All right, so we can see that uh, it shows us a correlation of 0.87. All right, so before you do the regression, you'll probably actually run a correlation to make sure the variables are related. All right, then second, you would test to see if the, uh, the relationship is linear. All right, so I skipped the, uh, I skipped the correlation part. All right, this R squared I mentioned earlier, this is the coefficient of determination. So we're basically saying about 75% of the variance in Y can be predicted from X. So that's a pretty good model for just a single variable. All right, remember that the closer we are to one, the better the model fits. Okay. All right, we, we can ignore the suggested R squared since we just have a single variable that we're using to predict Y. All right, over here is the result of the Durbin-Watson. Durbin-Watson takes on a value between uh, 0 and 4. Okay, and values close to 2 indicate that there is no significant autocorrelation. So, uh, again, the, so far the model looks pretty good. All right, as I move down... Uh, we have the analysis of variance table. Uh, this shows us the uh, error that is uh, attributed to the regression line versus the total error. All right, if I put the regression over the total, I'm going to end up with that R squared. Okay, I can also get it by simply squaring the, uh, the correlation. Okay. All right, so moving down, here's the actual model. So we're saying that the y-intercept is 62,995, all right, um, and that the square footage, the, uh, the value there is 107, call it 108. All right, so basically, we're going to start with 62,995, and for every square foot, we're going to add $108. So if it was a 1,200 square foot house, the equation for predicting that selling value would be 62,995 plus 1,200 times 108. Okay. All right, over here we can determine whether or not that slope is significantly different from zero. All right, and we do that using a t-test. All right, and often enough, the T is not by itself indicative of whether or not you can reject the null that the slope is zero. All right, this one's very high, so close to 10. All right, so uh, in, in any T test, I think that would be counted as a significant T. All right, but we can also look at the P value here, which is the significance, and we can see that it's very close to zero. It indicates that the slope is actually different from zero. All right, and here we have a 95% confidence interval of the slope, so we believe it's somewhere between about 86 and about 130. All right, if this 
confidence interval included a negative number, that would mean uh, it included zero, and then we wouldn't be able to reject the null. All right, so down here, we're going to go ahead and uh, scroll down a bit. We're not going to pay attention to the residual statistics at this point. Uh, we want to look at the other two tests that we ran, and uh, one of them was for normality of the error. So here's the histogram of the error. And we can see it's not exactly normal, but it's not too far off. You know, on visual inspection, at least, this does not violate the normality assumption of, of errors. All right, and then finally, we should have one more plot down here, and that's a test for homoscedasticity. All right, and essentially what we're looking for is a fairly constant deviation here, or basically no relationship. That's essentially what we're looking for, no relationship between the x and the y variable. So looking at this plot, we can just kind of eyeball it and see that, well, there isn't really a relationship there. If you want a more conclusive test, we can double click on the plot, and then we can add a line all right, a fit line, much like the regression line that we were making you know, the x and y variables above. All right, and when I add that fit line, we can see that it's flat. And so then again, uh, this confirms that, that the uh, variables uh, aren't displaying any heteroscedasticity. All right, so I hope that helps with running regression in SPSS.